Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to Some Arts. It's the end of summer. Sorry to say it, but we got one more awesome month, and that is September. So let's see what's in store. Honk. Just kidding. Honk's in October. But Somerville's premier festival of activity and community street brass bands from all the world is fast approaching. Get on out to Aeronaut Brewing Company on Friday, September 7th from 8 p.m. to midnight and help support this amazing festival with an evening of music, dance, beer, friendship, and community. Admission is free. They'll be accepting donations for, throughout the night, and kids and young adults are welcome. Persons under 21 are permitted as long as they have parental guardian accompaniment. At 8 p.m., the founders of Honkfest, the Second Line a Social Aid and Pleasure Society Brass Band will go on. A raucous, stomp your foot and belt out the chorus, New Orleans style activist street band. And at 10 p.m., hear your friendly neighborhood purple clad punk street brass wrecking crew from Lowell, the party band. Honkfest is October 5th through 7th. More info about that is at honkfest.org. More info about this fundraising event is at Aeronaut Brewery. Yeah, aeronautbrewingco.com. The Somerville Bicycle Committee meets on the first Thursday of the month from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the Academy Room of the Somerville Police Station on Washington Street in Union Square. The next two meetings are on September 6th and then on October 4th. Meetings are open to the public and volunteers and help are always welcome. The committee works to improve conditions for bicyclists in the city of Somerville promote bicycling as a means of transportation, improve safety conditions for bicyclists, and to help implement policy programs and bike routes for all ages. There are also team meetings. You can find out more information about those or sign up for their newsletter at somervillebikes.org. The Somerville Rock and Roll Yard Sale returns to the Boston area, Union Square Plaza in Somerville right there on Sunday, September 9th, with vendors from all over New England, selling a fun mix of records, vintage, DIY, handmade goods. From 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free, vendor space is sold out, sorry, and there will be local live music from Sleepyhead and Tia Hopkins and Cotton Candy, plus DJ Patrick Neil Bryant from WMBR will be spinning vinyl all afternoon. This event is organized and promoted by What Cheer Records and Vintage, and the Providence Rock and Roll Yard Sale with help from the Somerville Arts Council as part of their arts union programming. We love the Somerville Arts Council. What the Fluff takes place September 22nd, and I had a chance to speak with Jessica Eshelman from Union Square Main Streets about this annual confectionery celebration. Here's what she had to say about it. I am here with Jessica Eshelman from Union Square Main Streets and it's that time of year where we got to talk about all things fluff. <laughs> the What the Fluff Festival is coming back to Union Square on September 22nd. This is your first year w organizing this uh, behemoth festival. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going? Well, I have to say, um, it's such an honor to carry forward this festival, which is uh, the brainchild of Mimi Graney, and she was the first executive director of Union Square Main Streets. This is the 13th annual festival, uh, so we've done this once or twice as an organization, and I've got to give a big shout out to our planning team, the fabulous Fluff team, who has brought their experience and expertise to the process. So while I'm new, it's not new to our group or to the volunteers who help make it happen. But we're having a ton of fun with the theme, so this being the 13th annual, we're really playing up Fluff the 13th as a theme we're encouraging entertainers and participants to interpret how they might like to. Mm -hmm. um, encouraging folks to think of the playful, mystical, magical side of the idea of a Friday the 13th. Ironic humor, um, ironic horror, pardon me, black cats, turning luck. And a good example of that is our friends at Parkour Generations Boston, who will be building a custom set for attendees to Whoa. get a little practice of park or experience with parkour in a set that's got this theme interpreted. So parkour is brand new for us this year. The festival as a whole is 
absolutely all ages. There are activities designed for young ones who might like to play games like fluff bowling mm. or pin the F on the fluff boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who would be returning to the festival, they're likely to be familiar with the Midway Games. We set this up on Sanborn Court where mm -hmm. Bronwyn Restaurant is. And it doesn't cost anything for kids to play. Um, think like old time boardwalk games. That's sort of the feel of it all. Um, and as the kids play, they win tickets that they can redeem for prizes. And so it's a real great exercise in having some fun and then figuring out how to allocate your tickets to walk away with something that you've earned by playing some games. Oh, that is fun. Yeah. And then that all ages theme kind of goes throughout. Um, the cooking contest is coming back and we have four different categories for folks to be awarded the winner. One is best future chef for chefs 13 and younger, hmm. um, but then the other categories typically appeal to maybe more experienced chefs. Um, dancing this year, we have uh, the return of Invention Alley coming back. Hmm. So Invention Alley was new last year, and that is a partnership between Somerville High School's robotics team and Artisan's Asylum. Uh, last year, the robotics team had built a robot who could throw marshmallows, and the goal was to catch them as a participant, a festival goer. Um, and then the Artisan Asylum folks, they each station will have something different. So it might be laser cutting, it might be print making. It's really an opportunity for those innovators and artisans to come out and connect uh, in whatever way feels appropriate for their their expertise and their interests. Mm. Tying in fluff or fluff the 13th all, the, all along. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And you, we had talked beforehand about um, an additional stage. Actually two new. Two additional stages. Two additional stages. So what what's going to appear on those stages? So the first one that I'll mention is going to be hosted by Bow Market. Mm -hmm. Bow Market is on Somerville Ave, um, and many of us who are in the square are very familiar with it by now, but we recognize that many people are experiencing it for the first time. Uh, Bow Market has, of course, will have 30 micro uh, enterprises, uh, little shops of people starting out different businesses, and they have this beautiful courtyard in the center, so mm -hmm. it's a natural place for performances. So we've named this a Nutter Stage. Got to play with the theme. <laughs> and I understand that they've just confirmed a jug band. So there's going to be some real interesting music that's happening there. They're also working uh, with some street teams to draw some connectivity from the main festival area, which will be along the plaza, into the Bow Market area and some of the other businesses that are hosting programs on Bow Street. Oh, that's great, kind of activating the entire Union Square for the festival. You're onto it. Union Square Main Street's really saw an opportunity to draw the energy of 20,000 people further into the district and really showcase the diversity of the businesses that are here. When I started this uh, job, the previous executive director, Esther, had said to me, Jess, you, you don't need to try to get more people to fluff. It's almost too crowded. Mm. And that was an opportunity. Yeah. It was an opportunity. We can't quite close all the streets down just the way the traffic needs to move at this point in time, but we can partner with groups like Bow Market um, to put more programming where folks can get out of this uh, plaza area but still have a fluff experience. So a couple of the other businesses who jumped on this opportunity, Celeste, the new Peruvian restaurant, well, opened in March, newer Peruvian restaurant, they're teaming up with the neighborhood restaurant. Oh, really? And there'll be a salsa dance lesson and then party on the patio of the neighborhood restaurant. Uh, Block Cafe mm -hmm. will be hosting uh, family-friendly, folk-oriented music as well. And um, we've got a few more that we're finalizing now, but the idea is you can enjoy the main stage here at the Plaza, Invention Alley, the Midway Games, Parkour, and then when you're ready to try some other things, you can just explore more of Union Square. That sounds like a really great way to um, just bring all the local businesses together. You know where Stone Ave is because you're in the square every day. This is where uh, Mineral Brazilian Market on the corner is, is across from Grace's Hair Salon. Mm -hmm. Just to orient everybody Just at home. right over there. <laughs> we are activating a fourth performance area. So we have the main stage, uh, which we have some great acts on this year. 
the return of the shenanigans stage, which I have not yet mentioned, which will be in the parking lot near Cantina, the municipal parking lot right next to your building. Mm -hmm. And that's where fluff hairdos happens, fluff musical chairs happens, and all other kinds of zany, crazy, you're gonna need a shower and to do your laundry <laughs> after fun. Um, I told you about another stage, that's our third. And the fourth is the Stone Ave stage. Mm. <clears throat> and we're very excited to be featuring participatory hand drumming. So we are working with John Mandy and he has a business called Drums and Wellness and he can um, work with about 15 to 20 members of the community who just right in the moment decide that they want to get involved and he leads these um, exercises or these rhythm explorations, yeah. I want to say. Um, so there's dancing along with that, because I don't know about you, but when I see a drum circle, it's very rare that you see everybody standing still around that. There's a groove. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we've got that. Um, we'll have a martial arts demonstration there by Om Young Do, which is a martial arts studio here in Washington Street. And it looks quite likely we're still confirming that mariachi will also be featured wow. on that stage. Something for everybody. Truly something for everybody. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of show you behind the curtain. In addition for us to have a chance to activate this area and also feature more kinds of entertainment and activities, we see it as an invitation for festival goers to discover what's happening at Celeste, for example, mm -hmm. or at Block Cafe or Bull Market. Sort of a breadcrumb effect, if you will. What's the drumming? And you get down a little bit further, and then we'll be using balloons as a visual um, cue or invitations for people to continue to find these other pockets of programming that are happening. Wow, it sounds, it sounds fantastic. Um, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, I think we need to see some, we need to see this swag now. So, um, just some of the swag that will be available. I just brought one item because our t-shirts are being printed as we spoke. But I have to say, this probably gets the most comments, uh, commentary th out of all of the items that we make available. Everybody loves the What the Fluff logo that's here. <laughs> um, whether it's on the subway, I get stories from being around the world in the comments that happen when people have this bag. And I'm gonna share with the viewers, we heard your feedback last year. Well, this is a beautiful bag. You want the red handles, which makes sense because the jar of fluff has a red top. So don't worry, we've ordered the red handles right. this year. Red handle tote bags. But we also have hats and t-shirts, of course, which will be specific to this year's theme, Fluff the 13th. Stickers, magnets, all the kind of stuff where you can sport your Somerville pride. That, that makes it all worth it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for dropping by, Jessica. And uh, we will all look forward to the What the Fluff Festival on September 22nd. I'm so excited about that. And can I do one shout out? Absolutely. On the close. Um, I have to say a huge thanks to Allstate Insurance, which many of you watching might be familiar or more commonly referred to as Brazil Insurance because they've been here in Union Square for more than 30 years, recently became part of the Allstate family and they're a presenting sponsor this year. So their support is making this growth and the expansion of the program possible. So just wanted to say thanks so much Allstate and we're so excited to be celebrating innovation um, of Marshmallow Fluff here in Union Square. All right, thank you. Thanks. The Somerville Public Library's exhibition for September celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. I had a chance to speak with Julie Walker from SPL about this exhibit. I'm now here with Julie Walker from the Somerville Public Library. Welcome. Thanks. Hi, everybody. And we're here to talk about the latest exhibition that's going up at the Central Somerville Library uh, starting September 9th and going all the way through uh, October 7th to celebrate Latino Heritage Month. Um, it's a collaboration between SPL and a number of other organizations including the Welcome Project mm -hmm. and the Somerville Latino Association. Um, so how, how many artists are involved? Um, there are four artists involved and we're really excited to have them. Um, we do have some stained glass and some multimedia artists and I think also some painters. Okay. So the res our reception for the show is on September 9th. It's a Sunday at 2.30. There will be refreshments and we hope you can make it. It's open to everybody. And uh, all library programs are free and open to the public. Yes. And I, I've been to a few of the um, art shows mm -hmm. in that really great aud auditorium space. Um, and uh, 
it, it's just really great the way that the Somerville Public Library collaborates with different organizations and local individuals to bring together um, a space for people to, to see art. Thank you. We really put a lot of love into it and especially our gallery at SPL program where we showcase different artists and groups of artists every month. Um, we love it and we hope you can make it. Stop by. That's great. Yeah, as somebody who runs also like a, a non-gallery space, uh, here at SMC we have mm -hmm. A gallery wall space that's available. I know how, how tough that can be, um, especially when you're when you have uh, other responsibilities like mm -hmm. in an organization like the library. It, it really is worthwhile though, and people love it, um, and it's just a great service to offer. And the space is there, so why not use it? Why not? Well, thank you so much for coming on, thank Julie. Thank you for having me. And uh, we look forward to this exhibition, and we hope you can get out to see it. I'm here with Lee Kilpatrick and Dennis Stein, and we are here to talk about the Toy Camera Festival that is happening in a number of places, including uh, some Somerville venues. Um, so I want to start off asking you, Lee, what, what's a toy camera? Well, so um, if you see here, here's a camera. Um, a camera is basically a sealed box that has a few elements, like a lens. Um, it's sealed up, so you only get the image through the lens. The lens helps focus, and then there's ideas, there's various ways you expose it properly or not. Um, a toy camera is, has all those elements, but it's a terrible, terrible version of that. <laughs> like, in, many, well, in well, some cases, the lens is not very sharp. In other cases, it, you don't have any control over the exposure. And then you could also have leaking in the back. In fact, you can see this one has a lot of tape on it in order to prevent light leaking. But the reason you might want that is because you get um, very interesting effects from all those limitations. Um, um, people, uh, you get like a moody, usually a moody type of effect. Also, people are interested in like the randomness of it too. Um, but um, Dennis, do you have a, anything to add on that? It's very um, serendipitous mm. in terms of what you get and what it surprises you all the time. I started to use these in the 80s, late 80s, and I was just uh, amazed by the, the results of that. I mean, it's just ethereal, surreal, very just, you know, something so totally different from your, from your like hardcore, a slick digital, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. film, yeah, even like all the film cameras too, just so different. You know, some people use film because they want to slow it down and not get the digital look, but this is like more extreme. Mm. Uh, so it's taking, it's taking the qualities of an analog technology and yeah. Using the limitations uh, as to uh, to make aesthetically, you know, pleasing images. Right. In, in many cases, it's not just like a analog, but like a scratchy recording, mm -hmm. like that type of thing. Like oh, you have right. a record, an old record that's been a little beat up. So, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the the festival. Um, what? How long has it been going on? This is the sixth year. It started in 2013. Uh, yes, and. Um, the, uh, it's the Somerville Toy Camera Festival. It takes place at several venues. Uh, usually the nave, the, nave is, the nave is always involved. Washington Street is always involved. Brick Bottom is almost always involved. There was one year they couldn't make it, but, they, but Bonnie still like, is involved in organizing it even when the Brick Bottom Gallery was not available. Um, we have a show there in each of those venues for about a month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little longer in Brick Bottom. The openings are happening on the weekend of the 8th and 9th of September. Okay. Um, so um, this year we have 70, about 70 artists that wow. have work accepted into it. Um, there's a variety of cameras they use. Um, the Holga here, this is the, um, this is in like, used by like half the work, in half the work. This is a Diana, that's in the six, like a one sixth of the photos. Uh, then there's brownies like this that are, uh, several of those are used in like pinhole cameras and all sorts of different things. I remember the brownies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe some people don't consider them such a toy camera. Uh, they're toy in the sense that they're very limited control. Yeah. Um, sometimes people think they're too good because they have like a glass lens, but then other people will flip the lens, take it apart and flip the lens to get like an effect where it's all blurry around the outside. Mm. So. I've done that myself actually. If I pull it, you turn it off, you break it open, take the lens out, and then just turn the, lens, the inside lens in, and you get this kind of very kind of weird kind of effect on it. It's what other techniques do you use, Dennis, in your own work? Um, <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, it's, I basically go for the, the simple shot mm -hmm. in terms of the, any camera I use. Um, 
So with the Holga and with the banners, it's just basically seeing and responding to what I like and just photographing it. So it's, it's very simple and it's just, you, know, you don't know what you get until after the fact and you develop the film, black and white or color, and then you just are not to over by them pretty much. So some of the effects, do you want us to talk? Sure, like, yeah. So some of the effects are, um, often you get light leaks, which is why this one has tape on it. Um, if, if I have some examples, so like with this one, with this photo, mm -hmm. um, you can see there's a light leak here in the upper left-hand corner. This is taken with a Holga. Um, this one is, is like a more severe case, and this is taken with a Diana. And so this one has a lot of light leaks, which varies from camera to camera, like from instance to cam of camera to camera. Mm -hmm. But also here you can see this one is much more fuzzy, which is, seems to be more of a characteristic of, of the Diana camera. And then, um, like this is taken with a brownie, and it's more, it's sharper, but still there's like little control over it. And this, you know, you can see the difference though between the different images. Yeah, there's kind of, I love that light haze. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It really gives it a, a magic, uh, otherworldly yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very poetic. Yeah, that's a good effect um, for these cameras because the lenses are like, you know, they're doing all sorts of internal reflections and things like that. And if you look at this one, you can see that this is like very low contrast and there's kind of like almost like glare besides just like around those lights. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. And are these the qualities that attract the toy camera uh, for your work, Dennis? Oh yeah, I, mean, I have I think like six, six or seven Holgas and four or five Dianas and Banners and they're all different even though they're the same. Each yeah. camera has a different variation in terms of the, the light leak or the shutter. And I have a Holga that just the, the shutter got stuck, and you get this kind of like, mm. like um, multi multiple image in the corners, and it's just so cool. Mm. I don't even know which camera it is, but it's great to know that I have it, and just go out and shoot, and come back and develop, and it's like, wow, that's really cool. That's so cool. It, yeah. It, so it, the randomness of it is, very, is, yeah, is very part random. of it. Yeah, it is. It's great. Very cool. And so, like, do you go back and forth, either of you, between digital photography and uh, toy camera photography, or? Um, like, yeah. is this just one part of your one photography? photography? Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of digital photography. Also, I do a lot of indoor photography. So that's usually more digital because it's better for low light. Mm -hmm. um, but I do film more like with available light, more when there's better light or if I'm doing something. I'm actually planning to t take some photos near Washington Street. There's like a cafe that's lit up at night. I'll probably be doing that tonight with a with a, with a this Diana camera and a, a tripod. So Cool. Well, thank you very much for, for yep. coming in to talk about the, the Toy Camera Festival. Um, and we encourage everybody to get out there. Where can people find more information about it? Uh, you go to SomervilleToyCamera.org. Um, it lists the three gallery shows. Um, it lists the openings for that. Also, um, the juror who p selected all the work for this, Jennifer Shaw, she was, is having a show with the Griffin Museum of Photography. Um, in September, and that that's on there. That's inf that'll be around too. Uh, people can go to see that. That'll be very interesting too. It's, it was nice that they were able to schedule that when the Toy Camera Festival was happening. No, oh, yeah, very so, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Dennis, and thank you, Lee. Well, thanks. thanks for having us on the show. Project Mum takes place Saturday, September twenty second, from eight p.m. to midnight at Art Farm at Ten Poplar Street. I went to the website and I couldn't understand a word about what this event is about. I think there's electronic music and lasers and beards. The website's a little fuzzy. I was able to glean that this is a full participatory event. Come in costume, bring art, make art, be art, and dance. If it's like last year, there will be a $10 donation at the door. More information about this mysterious event is at projectmum.org. The third Evolution of Hip Hop Festival takes place on Saturday, September 29th from 3 to 7 in Union Square. It's a family-friendly festival showcasing the history of the hip hop culture. The festival showcases talent from the Somerville community and surrounding cities. Organizers call it a family affair. Grab some food from nearby restaurants and enjoy the music. This festival will also feature art, interactive activities, and local community groups. Produced by the Somerville Arts Council, once again, and SMC producer Yvette Wilkes. We love her. More info is at somervilleartscouncil.org. Since its inception in 2001, the Boston Latino International Film Festival, BLIFF, 
has been committed to using the power of film to break stereotypes, bring cultures and communities together, and reveal the complex issues that affect the Latino community in the United States and other Spanish-speaking countries. The lineup had not been announced as of this recording, but this year will feature 28 films over four days at four venues in the Boston metro area. The festival takes place September 27th through the 30th, and more information is at bliff.org. That does it for Some Arts this month. As always, check each of these events' websites for updates and cancellations. If you are producing an event that you would like featured, either on Some Arts or on our digital community bulletin board, shoot an email with the event details to programming at somervillemedia.org. For Somerville Media Center, Somerville Community Access Television, and Some Arts, I'm Dave.